Good day, people. We are out here comparing brakes. I have got two sets of brakes, a four pot and a two pot. Now we're gonna be looking at the comparisons between the two with regards to power. Now one of them obviously has four pistons, the other has two pistons. And to keep things fair, I also have the same pad compound in both. And just to mix it up a bit, we've got two different rotor sizes as well, 203 and 180, both by the same manufacturer. So all should be fair and square. We're gonna be doing the comparisons of the brakes in two different ways, a sort of controlled test looking at stopping distance and a more practical test out on the trail. It's also worth saying that I'm gonna be doing it on exactly the same bike every single time. So things like tires and suspension, stuff like that, won't change to try and keep it as fair as possible. Let's take a quick look at the anchors then. So first up on my bike, I have got the four pot brakes. Called that because they have got four pistons to each side. The heavier of the two brakes, but should offer them more power. Let's have a quick look at the others. Two pots, called that because they have a piston each side. They are lighter, but a little less powerful. So let's see how that is gonna to relate to on the trail. I've got two experiments lined up for you today then. The first, the more controllable of the two, is going to use stopping distance as our measurement to see how powerful the brakes are. With a set run in distance and at a set in speed, I'll get to a point and brake as hard as I can. Now obviously the most powerful configuration, we'll see what that is, should produce the shortest stopping distance. The second test, the more practical of the two, if you like, or the more relatable, is actually going to be timed runs on a trail, where I'll do several runs on each configuration of brake and do an average of the times, and we'll see sort of what was quickest, what was slowest, what maybe there was very little difference in. And uh, I think it could throw up some really interesting results. <laughs> Well, that was quite the hectic day out on the trails. Many, many runs were had, and it's nice to now be back in, a, back in the shed and a bit more chilled. I tell you what, I got a ton of numbers to crunch through and do some averages, work out some fastest, some slowest, and there's some really interesting results in there. So then this was a test of obviously different brake configurations. So two pots, four pots, 180 mil and 203 mil rotors and which configuration will offer up sort of maybe the most power um, and prove to be the best route on the trail. We did this, like I said, with two different experiments. The first, the most controllable of the two, which was, like I said, our uh, braking distance. Roll in, 16 and a half mile an hour, jam on the brakes, see how quick you stop and what that distance is to measure. The second, the more practical of the test, out on the trail, I chose about a 40 second long piece of trail and that had good mixture of some tight switchbacks, some fast sections, some turns, some sprints, a little bit of everything in it just to give us a good general overview. But I think it's probably time we delve into the first one because I can see you're all chomping at the bit to know the numbers. So let's have a little look. Experiment numero uno then, our brake distance test. I had a point where I was going to brake at I'd hit that point at 16 and a half mile an hour. I know it wasn't quite 82 miles an hour when we travel in time, but we do then jam the brakes on. Obviously there's lots of variables that can still affect this. Things like reaction time, keeping an eye on my speed. As much as I try to keep it the same every time, you know, it can always vary a tiny bit. The surface, the thing that did stay the same was the bike the whole time. And like I said, we kept the same pad compound between all the different brakes. It was all Shimano brakes and all Shimano rotors. So it was as fair as I could possibly make it whilst being out on the trail. But the numbers then. Two pot with 180 mil discs took a distance on average over three tests of five meters 32. Two pot with 203s, four meters 86. Four pot now with 180s was five meters and three. And four pot with 203s was 493. Now, let's take a quick look at this. So what we can gather is that the configuration that you'd expect to have the least power, the two pots with the smaller rotors, did have the biggest stopping distance or the longest stopping distance at 532. However, on the other end of the spectrum, the two pots and the four pots, but both with larger rotors, were you know, very similar in stopping distance, 496, uh, 486, sorry, and 493. So seven centimeters in it, which is, you know, nothing really. Uh, and, and I think what that shows in is that in a pure power test, I know it's not the quickest we could have been going and there was no potential heat buildup in the brakes to cause any kind of fade or anything like that. But 
it shows that the rotor size, I suppose, matters more than the actual amount of pistons or the caliper you use. Uh, so you could get away with running a smaller caliper, potentially, uh, to save a bit of weight, but as long as you've got that big rotor to provide the most leverage, sort of generate the most force, well then your braking distance isn't going to be affected too much. However, I think out on the trail it's going to be different, but on a, on a set run in with a set stopping time, really interestingly that you know it's so similar in uh, in their distance that it took them to stop but like i said on the other end of the scale the two pot with the 180 well it is obviously going to be as you'd expect the biggest stopping distance five meters 32 uh, you've just got the the least power on offer there so no huge surprises on that one what i did notice uh feelings wise was that jamming the brakes on with the larger rotors you could tell that you had to be you know quite careful on the front to not pitch you over to the bars too much they did offer a lot of power and that feel was there instantly it was a noticeable feel over the smaller rotors again on to a more practical test then and this was on an actual piece of trail that i'd chosen it was give or take 40 seconds long. And like I said, had a wide variety of uh, terrain and obstacles in it. So there was some heavy braking, some accelerating, some tight switchbacks and so on and so forth. Again, the bike I didn't touch throughout the entire test. So tire pressures, suspension, lever angles even, none of that was changed, just the rotors and calipers and then obviously bled through. Also, it is worth noting that both of them were bedded in so that there was fading going on there or take the time it takes to bed them in a little bit. The numbers, well, okay, over a give or take, like I said, 40 second piece of trail, the two pots with the 180s, there were a 39.3 second runtime. The two pot with the 200 discs, well, 40.3. Now you're wondering why is that slow? Well, actually, I made a bit of a cock up, I'll be honest. I did slide out on a corner, so therefore, you know, it is going to affect that average time a little bit more. I don't think it's quite a fair representation as I think it would be contending with the quickest times, uh, which speaking of those, a four pot with a 180, 38.8, so about just over half a second quicker and four pot with a 203 mil was the fastest time, 38.7. Again, it's only a small section of trail, I know, so it's not going to be uh, representative of if you're out smashing the Alps and these big mountain trails. But it does show that obviously, again, the most powerful brake configuration is the quickest. I just felt that I could break the latest intersections. I felt that like the power was there instantly. With the two parts, with the smaller disc, you could, you could just notice that when you were charging into something with speed, that you'd have to get on the brakes a little bit earlier. These experiments then, well, they were more of a look at the practical applications and the alterations in the brake. We didn't have testing equipment like telemetry or putting them in some kind of crazy machine in a lab because, well, who does that? Let's be honest, apart from the manufacturers. So what we wanted to do was try and tell you guys how the actual feel changes on the trail. Again, you know, we, we didn't have a big mountain, so this is worth noting that brake fade can be a problem, brake pad compound can change and can obviously again alter the feel of the brakes but what we can take away from it is that you know especially in the the practical the timed run the time between a two pot with a 200 mil and a four pot with a 200 mil although seems great in this test result i think actually is very little in real life terms the size of the rotor can play a huge part over the size of the caliper you're using so whether you have a trail bike or a big enduro bike, you might be looking at saving the weight um, if you only ride the shorter stuff. So going for that two pot caliper with the bigger rotor. If you are smashing bigger mountains, then probably the most powerful option is gonna be for you. Food for thought, I know. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'd love to hear what kind of brake setups and configurations you guys use in the comments below. Do let me know, I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, like and subscribe to our channel to watch more awesome content, and I look forward to seeing you again. Happy shredding, catch you later.